<coughs> oh man, it's it's been a rough couple of days since I, my last video, man. I got constipated and then got sick. I don't know if getting sick had if I got sick from being constipated. But man, I wasn't sleeping. I slept for like an hour. Like last Wednesday, or this just past Wednesday, I went to sleep at 5, I have to be work at 7, I got slept for an hour, I got up, my side hurt, and then I, I, was out, um, I can't go to the bathroom, and then, so Thursday, I was like, okay, I'll just get home and sleep, and I slept for a little bit, and I got up, and I'm just hot. I was like, I took a shower, I took a shower, and I was like, shivering. And I was like, Am I sick? I was like, Oh my god, I'm sick. <laughs> Go to work. I, I was able to leave early. And, but by the nighttime, like late Friday night, I was I'm just feeling better. Saturday, uh, yeah, I just, it was only like for two days, and I feel a lot better now. So, Jesus Christ, man. So. So I'm still on, I'm trying to stay on the Alex De La Iglesia kick. I'm going to review The Commonwealth, but I got some of his other movies. I got his, Jesus, what year is this? I don't know what year this is from. <clears throat> this is one of his more recent movies. Perfect Strangers. I got it from the library. No subtitles. It's in Spanish. I don't know what they're saying. Other than a few words. I left it on. I, I need to see. It. There's a red moon in it. It bathes everything in red. So that was kind of cool. But this is not horror at all. And I got. See if I can find a year on this. Nope, too small. I got as luck as luck would have it uh, with Sama Hayek. So, and this one it, it has subtitles, so I'll be able to watch that one. I wonder, and I wonder if I could get a copy of Perfect Strangers with subtitles. Like, why isn't it? Why doesn't it have subtitles? Okay, so the Commonwealth. <coughs> oh, it's in Spanish. <laughs> so there's this <coughs> lady who, Julia. <coughs> she's a realtor and she's trying to sell this apartment or rent this apartment in this building. And the <coughs> so she's. I guess she, her and her husband are going through a bad patch. <clears throat> oh, it's in English. A lucky real estate agent, a decomposed body, a building full of greedy neighbors, 300 million hidden in the cellar. Something smells rotten in this house. Julia finds 300 million casetas hidden in a dead man's house while selling an apartment. She's a 40-ish. Yeah, right. She's a 40-ish real estate agent. Man, if she's 40, man, she's a rough 40. Real estate agent now forced to face the wrath of a very peculiar community of neighbors headed by an unscrupulous administrator. Black humor gives way to suspense, closely followed by horror that doesn't take long in coming to a head in undisguised pandemonium. So yeah, this one is a lot better is a lot better than Dying of Laughter. There's way more characters. It's a, it's a contained story in this building. And it's just more direct and it's funnier. It's a little more violent. Oh yeah, you see a decomposed body in the very beginning. And I was like, man, that's a good body. Like good special effects on that. So yeah, so she finds the money and she's trying to sneak it out. But the residents, they know, they know that the decomposed body, the old man had won the money. They were just, they were trying to snake it away from him somehow and they just never could they're all conspiring 
against Julia mainly. And like she has her husband and he's just is like he has a really shitty job as a bouncer. He gets beaten up a couple of times. And uh, he he doesn't exactly leave her, but it, I, I, this part, like, I thought she, Julia was like a bitch because he pisses her off and she doesn't, after she found the money and she doesn't want to tell him. And like, she, she just didn't really care about her marriage, it seemed. That matters to anyone. So he just, he's out of the picture. I thought he was going to come back and like help her out. I thought he had seen it before, but he's just gone. And she's ready to run away with this other guy that lives in the building. So the whole thing is the back and forth of her trying to get the money out. But, you know, the tenants aren't going to let her. And what she has to do. Those are the tenants, if you can see that. And what she has to do to, to get out and survive and get the money. Which is the basic framework of the movie. But what's really good is the apartment tenants they're all good characters you don't get too much depth depth to who they are but they definitely each have a personality they're all just uh sore losers sad sacks just oh god they just missed life or whatever whatever happened to them they ended up here or never left the building one thing about Alex de la Iglesia is he really likes he likes to use old people as characters, or at least he did. Because everyone in that Perfect Strangers is pretty young. All the tenants, and they're mostly ladies, they're in their 50s and up. And the ladies are the meanest, like, most cutthroat ones, more than the men. They just don't have the physical power to to just take it from her like the men do. And, yeah, even though it's almost uh, two hours, it, it was never a little, waned a little towards the end. It has a good climax where they're climbing on the roofs. And, but there is one lady, I, I don't know her name. <clears throat> she was in, <coughs> oh my God. She's in Day of the Beast. And she is, man, she is wicked. She's a great villain. Just her voice, the way she looks, the look she gives. Man, she's one mean bitch, man. And she's the one that really goes after Julia at the end. And they're, she does like a Matrix jump that was really funny. Um, there's one part where an elevator, like this guy gets caught under it and it splits him in half. That was pretty brutal. It wasn't gory. You don't see blood. But you do see him cut in half for, for a split second. Uh, again, there's a lot of, like I said, like, hmm, sign of laughter, a lot of humor that doesn't translate, but for the most part, it does in this one. This one's just a lot sharper, meaner, just better than, than, um, Dine of Laughter, which I was like, I remember I thought Dine of Laughter was okay, and I was like, was it? Maybe the Commonwealth isn't as good as I remember. It, it is really good. He's, well, I know he works, he collaborates with a writer. Let's see if I can read his name. Jorge Gericachevera. Huh. Let me try again. Jorge Gericachevera. Gericachevera. Who seems to have written all of his movies. They work really well together. Um, and then there's also one character. Who dresses up like Darth Vader. He's the youngest one in, in the in the building. And uh, yeah, he's a good character. There's there's one. The lady who plays his mother. The, the Darth Vader kid's mom. She's older. I was like, man, I could still see that she's kind of cute. There's another lady, and I looked up one of them. She was man. She's really pretty when she was young. I was like, man, girls just deteriorate <laughs> so bad. And I couldn't. Her name was Hortensia, and I could never figure out. Like I, I watched scenes again. I was like, 
where I thought they would say her name, but I never saw her name. I was like, who is she? This is a bunch of old bags in here. So the Commonwealth, yeah, it was really good. It's a uh, if you, if you like Alex de la Iglesia, man, how many times are I gonna say that again? This this one is really good. I would give it a four out of five. Man of Hands of Fate. It's it's not the greatest story, and there's not it's not a gore fest. It's not even that violent. There is some violence, and yeah, and he knows how. To, there's no shootings in this. Oh yeah, there is. There are. Yeah, and he just knows how to do like hard hitting. Brutal fighting and violence when it's necessary and when he wants to do it. I just wish he would do. Uh, I wish he would have done like a Scarface or a Judge Dredd movie, something like that. I wish we go back to. I'm like going in reverse. I'm doing his newer movies. I'm gonna do his his earlier movies later, and I want to buy that that Action Mutante Blu-ray from Seven. It's like forty five bucks, man. I'm just waiting, I'm just biding my time to bite the bullet on that one. So hopefully the, <clears throat> all these will end with him. I'm going to review some other movies, but I do have, like I said, uh -huh. Uh -huh. I have as luck would have it. I was really bummed that this wasn't subtitled. I was going to watch, I was well ready for it last night and I was feeling better and then I was like, God damn it. But I watched something else that I'm going to review that was really good. So Alex, man... We got a fan here. Hopefully, someone will watch his movies. So yeah, I got all these from the library. <clears throat> you can get the Commonwealth from the library. So um, it, yeah, it's again, it's more black humor, satire, of, especially Spain. He's just all about Spain and representing his his country and um, city. Is it in? What's the big city in? Like, uh, God damn it. I can't remember. Anyway, I'll figure it out. So, the Commonwealth, uh, definitely check it out, and I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully. Bye.